Let's speak to um, SABC News International Editor Sophie Mukwena. Sophie, thank you so much for your time this evening. Let's reflect back on the life of veteran politician Aziz Bahad. Well, of course, as you had earlier on in that insert, he was the Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister. He served in that capacity for quite a long time, working with uh, ministers such as uh, Dr. Nkosa Zanatla Minizuma, who was the Foreign Affairs Minister during the Tabumbegi administration. And of course, the most important thing about him at that time and when he was in the diplomatic cycle, he was actually pushing for a better relationship with the Arab countries and also uh, pushing and insisting that the issue of uh, uh, Palestine or the Middle East question should be resolved. Also, when there were challenges between uh, uh, the UN and Iran with the oil for food program uh, scandal, where South Africa was put under pressure to impose sanctions against Iran, he played a prominent role also uh, ensuring that South Africa find a way out of that uh, uh, challenge. But also, as he pointed out, during the Iraq war, you know, the invasion uh, in Iraq where Saddam Hussein was killed, uh, he played a very important role after the South African government then uh, appointed a group of scientists from South Africa who were familiar with issues that were related to nuclear armament. You know that uh, the apartheid regime had started a nuclear program, and therefore you had scientists uh, from that time and other scientists who were familiar in terms of investigating whether Iran has got, uh, Iraq has got nuclear of, uh, armaments of mass uh, destruction. And it is him who was part of that delegation, and they compiled a report that pointed out that there were no uh, armaments or weapons of mass destruction. And the then former president of South Africa engaged Tony Blair, who was the prime minister of the uh, United Kingdom, and Bush who was the president of the United States of America, trying to convince them not to invade Iraq. We know that they didn't listen. It's only now where Blair in particular, when we ask him now, he tends to be very emotional, uh, saying that he regrets and he should have listened to the former president, uh, particularly to South Africa, when South Africa said that there were no weapons of mass destruction. And today, when you look at Iraq, Iraq is almost like a failed state. Mm. It did play a very, very prominent role in strengthening the relations between South Africa and other countries working with uh, Dr. Nkosa Zanata Minizuma, deputizing Dr. Nkosa Zanata Minizuma, but mm. a very, very close friend of the former South African President Thabo Begi yeah. uh, when they were still young and the, when they left the country. In fact, it is not Isop who was very, very close to him. It was Aziz. But later, you know, when the family interact with friends, and one can tend to be more closer to your friend uh, as you interact and as you mingle. And I'm going to get to that relationship in just a moment. But speaking about, you know, just his involvement, particularly as Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, you think about, you know, his role when it comes to shaping ANC government's policies and, and, and also just about his role um, presenting his own, you know, his country's uh, stance when it comes to that wall that was erected um, you know, that security fence um, around the Palestinian situation, even saying that this is a fence that is separating children from their parents. This is a fence that really the world does not need and should be lambasting. And this, of course, as he was playing that significant role in what was happening in the Middle East. Yes, even in his twilight years, uh, when he spoke about Middle East, you could see the passion and the pain in relation to the freedom of the Palestinians. And he was very consistent in line with the ANC policy in relation to 
Palestine question. And you know, even people like uh, former President Nelson Mandela, the late former President Nelson Mandela, they were very, very passionate about the issue of uh, Palestine, including uh, Harawi. And he was very, very consistent, you know, even in his twilight years, he kept emphasizing that uh, the South African government cannot abdicate its responsibility to fight and support mm. uh, the Palestinians. And therefore, that was something that was very, very close to his heart. And when, uh, this week, in fact, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, at the United Nations General Assembly, the big breaking story in his speech was that uh, he, uh, Israel will be signing a peace agreement with Saudi Arabia. And by extension, there's hope that that peace will be extended to other Arab countries. And also by extension, maybe it will make things easier for Israel and Palestine to engage. We don't know. But I think this is something that was very, very close to his heart, the freedom of the Palestinians. And when one thinks about his history, he comes from a family of political activists. But when he speaks about his influence in politics, he talks about somebody that you also alluded to a little earlier on. Um, that's former President Thabo Mbeki, even speaking, you know, and, 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 and thinking about what he says, particularly when it comes to his shaping of his political career, when he wrote that essay, the Thabo Mbeki, I know. Let's talk about that friendship. Well, the relationship with the Pahad brothers in Beggy Head was very, very strong. I can imagine at this moment, uh, not long ago, uh, it was uh, it's Pahad. Mm. But now it is Dr. Aziz Pahad. I can imagine at this moment and uh, how he feels like, because I was so Pahad uh, passed on. When I spoke to those who were to him, my president, they were that uh, he's distraught because mm. these are the people that he grew up with. We remember during the memorial, the prize uh, that was hosted by, I think it was the foundation. Unfortunately, there were technical Sophie, I'm going to ask that... Sophie, I'm going to ask that they try to get you back on a better line because you, you're talking about something very important and this is a relationship that, you know, he, he continued to speak about. And also, I mean, you, you think about when he writes that particular essay and you, you go back to that moment in, in, in 2008 when we saw, um, you know, ministers and, and deputy ministers resigning um, just after the former president, you know, handed in his own resignation and quite a lot still being said about that and we're going to try and get you Sophie back on the line and I do understand now we've got Paolo Jordan um, with us on the line. Thank you so much Mr. Jordan for your time. Let's start with your reaction to this development. Well obviously it's a very tragic uh, development. Uh, Comrade Aziz has been unwell now for a number of months and even at the time of his uh, late brother's passing and funeral, he was visibly very, very, very unwell. Uh, Aziz Pahad has been a feature of our national liberation struggle from a very young age. Uh, if you go through the archives, you find a picture of him in 1946, when his mother was amongst the resistors, was arrested during the passive resistance campaign in Natal. Uh, you will find Aziz again featuring in the Transvaal Indian Youth Congress during the 1950s. And then uh, I met him during our years in Edval in Britain. And uh, the occasion on which we met uh, was very aptly during a mass demonstration, the Order Master March, uh, which used to take place every Easter in uh, Britain. Uh, it was a, a march directed at uh, the attainment of world peace and uh, for nuclear disarmament. That's where I first met this part. We worked together in London, 
And he and I were deployed to the People's Republic of Angola at the same time in 1977. We worked there together for a year, after which he returned to London. And uh, we continued to work together, me based in Africa, he based in London. And uh, we were elected to the national executive of the ANC at the same conference, uh, Cabway, in 1985, and served together on the national executive of the ANC until uh, the Pulikwana conference in 2007. Uh, Aziz was a very important figure in the transition as well, and I think everyone is aware of the role he played uh, in the negotiation process and its initiation uh, with, um, I suppose, confidence-building exercises with the representatives of the uh, previous regime. Uh, it was then obviously appropriate that he should also receive a ministerial position uh, when we got into political office in 1994. And I think he served as the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, from that first Mandela government until the time he resigned from government uh, in uh, 2008, I think it was, yeah. Mm. So, uh, you know, this is a man with a very long track record. And, uh, yeah, he has made a sterling contribution uh, to the struggle for liberation, for democracy, and for the reconstruction of our country. Uh, he will be missed, but, uh, you know, uh, we all keep this appointment. Uh, it's one we can never miss. Uh, our condolences go out to his family, his friends, uh, and his comrades. Uh, he will be missed, and may he rest in peace. And, and, and for you, as, as, as a former cabinet minister, somebody who would also have, uh, you know, worked with him as well as you've just described for us. Let's talk about some of those moments where there would be difficult discussions that are held behind closed doors. Let's, if, if you're able to reflect on that for us. <laughs> well, I can reflect on the difficult discussions in cabinet because <laughs> that's, that's not the sort of thing that's <laughs> I can talk about the difficult discussions <laughs> in ANC during the years of uh, the armed struggle before democracy, that I can easily talk about. Uh, no, Aziz made his contribution in that area as well. Uh, I think as uh, the record will reflect, uh, he was seconded to the Revolutionary Council uh, of the ANC at the very early stage after the Borogoro Conference in 69. And then, uh, yeah, he worked uh, in a very important position uh, in London, uh, coordinating, in the main, contacts uh, with uh, people inside the country uh, from exile. Uh, that was one of the reasons when we were jointly deployed to Angola. Uh, it was at the same time, 1977, because we were both involved very. Uh, we were both involved in internal propaganda work. I, as head of Radio Freedom at the time, and in Aziz, uh, mainly with uh, written propaganda and stuff like that. All right, let me thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for taking our call, and you still owe us <laughs> some of those uh, discussions. But uh, that was uh, former Cabinet Minister Paolo Jordan uh, speaking to us about uh, the passing of Aziz Pahad. And I do understand uh, we've got Sophie back on the line um, with us, our international news editor. Sophie, we're still talking about that uh, relationship with former President Tabumbegi just before um, the line was interrupted there. Yes, you are correct. As I pointed out, that uh, they had a very strong relationship. In fact, the pr former president had uh, a good relationship with the Kahad brothers, almost like friends, not only uh, comrades. And uh, in terms of work, later when they were back, uh, the work continued as we had the uh, Palo Jordan talking about the role they played in terms of uh, uh, talking and profiling the African National Congress, 
uh, in exile uh, in relation to the information uh, department of the ANC. But also we spoke about when the former president, Thabo Bek, was recalled by his party uh, during this time uh, in, 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 in 2008. Uh, pa- uh, Iso as Aziz Pahad and the others did resign from uh, from cabinet. But uh, I think uh, when I look at September in general, it was during this time also, maybe a week ago, where uh, during September, the former president was supposed to go to the United Nations to deliver his farewell speech. Because the following year, it was going to be election year. And it was clear that in terms of being a head of state, he was not coming back because of the constitution and there were farewell uh, tours that were arranged and the united nations in september was going to be one such event and i can imagine when the anc leadership uh, the NEC in 2008 led by president uh, jacob zuma and the others with the mandashe Khalema Motlante, took a decision that uh, the NEC has recalled him. Then Dr. Nkosa Zanajabini-Zuma and people like uh, uh, Aziz Kahat had to step in to continue the diplomatic work that Mbeji was supposed to do, that we go to the United Nations to deliver his farewell speech. So I think uh, it was a very trying moment for them, and some of them took a decision to leave office because they felt that they were appointed by that leader or that head of state, and they were serving uh, uh, at the behest of that leader. If they were to be reappointed, then the new president was going to do that. Or, uh, that was going to be, or oh, that became uh, Mr. Khalema Motlanti who stepped in. So I think, yeah, it speaks to that strong relationship. And one of the things that we often do, particularly at a time like this, when someone, um, you know, who's a veteran and significant passes on from various political parties, one thinks back to their contribution, juxtaposing it to where the ANC finds itself, for example, as a party now. And I wonder what are some of the reflections that they begin then to have, because we're speaking to them this evening and they say they're still going to be formulating quite a comprehensive statement on his passing for now they're still trying to come to terms with this particular news but one wonders what kind of reflections do they begin to have in 2023 think, yeah it does hit the ANC because then you then reflect in terms of the type of leadership this person who has passed on uh, was and in relation to the contribution uh, to the ANC. And as I pointed out, when you look at the track record, at a very difficult time, you know that when the ANC was launched in 1912, the Native uh, Congress, it was mainly African. Hmm. These are South Africans who were not necessarily uh, black Africans, but they were uh, uh, black uh, uh, who joined, and we often refer to them as the minorities within a bigger uh, organization or country, but they were so loyal and they were really, really pushing. If you look at their contribution, even during the armed struggle, you'll see that the so-called minority in the ANC were really, really uh, taking a bull by the horn. I'm talking yeah. about the system in terms of ensuring that that uh, struggle uh, was effective. They were very brave, and I think this is a moment to, for the ANC to reflect. You also look at how they conducted themselves in government. Today, the main problem the ANC is facing is the issue of uh, corruption and people uh, who are linked to some of the issues uh, that they still have to respond to. But when you look at some of these seniors, uh, you look back, you can't find fault, but they were such hard-working, loyal ANC uh, members from childhood. And I think uh, the ANC is right to say we need time to reflect because you can't just issue a statement. Mm. It is not just Sofimu now who has passed on. Yeah. It is 
a veteran. And it's someone they need to also think long and hard, as you say, as they speak about his legacy and uh, what he embodied and what then becomes, uh, you know, a way forward for them as they now continue to look ahead, particularly you think about next year's elections. But let me thank you so much for your time. That is uh, International News Editor Sophie Mukwena. We'll continue to bring you more on this uh, developing story here on the SABC, the late edition coming up next with Flo Litwaba, and they will be bringing you more um, on this particular development, the passing of former Deputy uh, Minister Aziz Pahat, and uh, we'll continue then to monitor this one. But thank you so much um, for your time here on The Full View. See you again tomorrow from us. Good night.